Okay, welcome back to Your Regina 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina as part of a four-year, well, originally four-year, turned into eight, uh, computer science degree. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about uh, consequentialism and belief again. Uh, we're we're going to go into a, kind of one of the ways that these two things could be viewed, uh, and in fact was viewed, uh, and that is pragmatism. Uh, and so I found, or, or alternatively, instrumentalism, depending which way you look at it. Uh, but I found it, uh, kind of either one, uh, on a book on educational philosophy by one Theodore Brammel. Uh, and uh, kind of as a young man, I liked the ideas in that book. Uh, it's not the best book ever written. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you read it. Uh, but it was trying to bridge multiple approaches to culture and how culture can work uh, in one particular organized activity, and that is education. And we're going to be talking a lot about education in this video, so kind of stay tuned as we go. Uh, so what pragmatism is? Pragma pragmatism is a way of approaching philosophy. Uh, it's, a, it's the classic American way, uh, starting from about the 1870s on, uh, and comes mostly from American philosophers like Charles Sanders Pierce, William James, who basically started modern psychology, uh, John Dewey, who showed us how education could be better than it was, uh, and we are still not living up to the, the ideal, uh, ironically enough, that he kind of showed us. Uh, and the, his particular cor or torch is carried by hackerspaces and Montessori schools to this day, uh, and has been also carried, or in the ideas of pragmatism have also been carried down to us by people like Richard Rorty, Hilary Putnam, uh, and even occasionally in thinkers like Ernst Mach, uh, Wittgenstein, Noam Chomsky, Thomas Kuhn, and even uh, crazy people like Mussolini, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, Sean Kennedy and Eliezer Eli Yukowski, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, as well as Les Wrong's The Other Dave, I've noticed as well. So there's no one pragmatism. Uh, there's many different threads, many different ways to think about it, many di different viewpoints of it. Uh, and so you want to find a person who's a pragmatism or who's a pragmatist uh, and argue with them if you disagree with anything that I'm about to say. Uh, so if you disagree with it in principle, you know, feel free to disagree and feel free to even kind of disagree with this video for target practice if you want, but nobody cares. Uh, nobody cares about your disagreement here. Uh, disagreeing with this uh, as a whole is basically a straw man, if you go back to the straw man video and kind of look to see how that works. Uh, but you want to find someone who believes these things and then get into things with them. Uh, that would be the way to go forward. Uh, so pragmatism is concerned with the consequences of belief. It opposes idealism. It deals almost or pretty much entirely with what you can actually achieve and with what is actually before you. It doesn't necessarily worry about things that don't concern you uh, in the slightest. And it's a way of addressing metaphysical problems. Uh, and it's a general principle that allows you to kind of decide between potential actions and between potential viewpoints uh, when you have kind of no other means of doing so, or even before you get to the point where you have no other means of doing so. It views belief as, quote, that upon which a man is prepared to act. So it is what you are already prepared to do, what you are already prepared to choose between, that is of concern here. It's also interested in clarifying confusing concepts and clearing up our ideas and, and kind of sharpening our belief systems so that we can actually act on them in a better way. It demands that we define our terms and that if we get into situations where we disagree with each other, then we kind of bring science into the play and actually resolve our differences that way. Uh, and if we get into an if by whiskey situation where, uh, you know, if by whiskey you mean that devilish fire water that is horrible for you, then I, you know, don't support it. And if by whiskey you mean the delicious substance that makes me feel good, then I support it. In situations like that, the pragmatist will demand that you choose one or the other, believe that and stick with it, and then work out the consequences of that belief. Uh, so they'll also be kind of skeptical that you can do anything with kind of the uh, definitions alone. So, quote, nothing is ever learned by analyzing definitions, unquote. Uh, so that the things to know, the things that are worth knowing are in the outside world. You can learn them by experiment and what you can experience directly. And so there's no, there, there's no one split between what is and is kind of not pragmatism. But there's a lot of different issues that you can kind of view a pragmatist viewpoint on. 
So for example, the, the split between science and religion and the, between what can be verified and what can't be verified. Uh, pragmatism is going to be more interested in the, the kind of views of science and that, those kinds of questions. Uh, it's going to be uh, in the split between kind of sentiment or tender-mindedness and tough love honesty, kind of siding with the tough love side of, you know, believing regardless of how kind of painful or unpleasant it is, if th that is what kind of gets results. Uh, it is more interested in kind of the fatalism than free will and freedom and fighting for freedom specifically. Uh, and given a choice between two alternatives where one is kind of more likely to provide freedom, uh, that isn't necessarily going to be as interesting as just what gets results. So this is a, a real, real politic uh, kind of based ideology, a, a, a way of looking at the world in terms of what the actual consequences of political action and political beliefs will be, rather than the kind of what we would like to be the case, or the kind of conception of, for example, the nation state uh, that doesn't kind of include real politic. Uh, it, it tends to fall on the side of realism versus optimism or pessimism. It falls on the kind of hard work and business mindedness versus quiet intellectualism and you know having your head kind of up in the clouds and uh, philosophies that don't necessarily uh, mean anything in practice. Uh, it, it tends to fall uh, along the side of laws that can be easily understood and used rather than a tangled mess of spaghetti code that no one really understands but with which everyone kind of agrees to abide by uh, and live under. Uh, it actually, or it, it prefers actual things that we can experience versus God as explanations for things. Uh, it would prefer the thing that works right now versus the one true way. So for example, in something like the Emacs versus BI debate, uh, it would actually look at what actually allows people to work quicker and get to work quicker uh, in resolving something like that. Uh, for example, Emacs has a bit of a learning curve, so in most situations they probably wouldn't support Emacs on those grounds alone. Uh, it tends to be more er er on the side of understanding reality and, and looking for an understanding of reality rather than as a kind of looking towards spiritualism and spiritual explanations of things. Uh, it's concerned with reality rather than our thoughts of reality. And so uh, even on the level of what is and we have access to, uh, it would be more interested in the, the potential for reality to be manipulated rather than any worry that reality is just our own thoughts, even if that were the case. Uh, it's more interested in uh, doing the hard work of kind of proving things and knowing things than just global skepticism, which we'll get into. Uh, they're probabli or probability or probabilists. Uh, they're aware of statistics at that time. And they're aware of our kind of own frailty as thinkers. Uh, and this kind of is in opposition to uh, absolutists who assume that we can reason from things that are certain into new certainties and do so perfectly. So they won't, for example, necessarily take for granted that they're always right or that they're completely right. They'll always kind of leave some room for doubt uh, in a statistical informed way. They're interested in checks and balances versus executive power. Uh, empiricism and hands-on experimentation versus rationalism and just kind of thinking that the way things should be because we think that they look or feel elegant to us. Uh, it's more interested in things that we could experience versus talking about things that we can't directly experience or that we're not likely to. For example, it would be less interested in, say, black holes and the nature of black holes than kind of more uh, pressing issues such as what to do with the refugees in Europe, for example. It, it would be kind of, tr or it would treat belief as a habit, no different than any other habit that we could have, versus treating belief as something innate that we're going to kind of develop uh, and that would be a part of us uh, in a different way. Uh, it would treat truth as whatever worked rather than something that's inherent or something that's going to be permanent. Uh, it, it concerns what matters right now versus uh, Kant's uh, universalism and kind of view of making sure that you do things in your situation as if everyone in your situation would do the same, or, or kind of in the, kind of flipping the, the way that your situation works to be more univer universal, universally valid. Uh, so they, pragmatists would be, well, what works right now, what's important right now, what works in your particular situation, that's what we want to go for. You know, they, a, a pragmatist approach to voting might be strategic voting. You could probably make a pretty good argument along pragmatic lines for that. 
versus voting for your heart and voting for what you believe in. Uh, your pragmatist would be more interested in, in manipulating the environment for your own ends rather than leaving it alone and letting ecology do its work. Um, it would be more in favor of having psychiatry uh, control patients and keep them docile and functional uh, versus actually understanding their ailments and kind of working with them as people uh, to kind of resolve any uh, problems that they have on that level. Uh, so they would probably be more kind of interested in Ritalin and doping people up rather than the natural state, uh, if that were kind of an interesting uh, debate for you. Uh, it would be more interested in positiv positivism and the kind of view of science as a positive thing in that light versus idealism. Uh, it would be more interested in the natural versus the supernatural explanations for things, which would come up as important as at the time uh, in the kind of late 19th and early 20th century, the evolution versus creationism debate was raging. Um, so they would be interested in project-based uh, learning versus top-down learning to do whatever it is that the teachers tell you and only what the teachers uh, should tell you uh, and only in the order that the teachers are interested in teaching you so that the students' interest should guide what they learn and in what order and even how much students should learn. It's related to hackerspaces in this sense and in it to our approach more generally because if you have an idea for a project, we kind of provide tools for you to use, the knowledge that we have, and likewise when we're working kind of on a project of our own and our knowledge, we're basically doing the same thing. So you can see the, the kind of very project-related behavior that this is encouraging. It's a fallible or a fallibleist uh, view of things, so that the pragmatist will acknowledge that their knowledge is imperfect, that they could be wrong in everything. And so this contrasts with Cartesianism and Descartes, as described in the Descartes video, and even the Polya view of things, as discussed in the Polya video, in terms that both of those uh, two thinkers tried to reason from what they knew for certain and kind of reason towards more and more knowledge that was still absolutely certain or at least plausible, whereas the pragmatic view will be, well, this is what we think for now, and we can kind of work around our, our ignorance to the extent that we can and try to be as coherent as possible, so kind of take a stance of coherentism in epistemology, going back to the epistemology video, uh, versus uh, what's called foundationalism, so that where you basically have a foundation of knowledge uh, that you're certain of and then kind of work from there. Uh, they're using, or they're more interested in using logical syllogisms as just kind of a guidance, as a way of suggesting things, rather than uh, the classical view of, of logical syllogisms, which is kind of the you know absolute truth of, of what the, I guess, content of the syllogism deals with. Uh, they're more interested in the fact that we are social beings from the start uh, versus a kind of a view of things that begins where people are isolated and then kind of adds and builds up as more and more people are added to it, uh, as many of the kind of the original political science or political science thinkers would have done. Uh, they're more interested in how human beings in practice actually think and act versus how we'd like them to think and act. So, for example, we they wouldn't be interested in idealized utopian visions of how things could be and how we could all live together in peace and harmony. They're more interested in how to actually motivate people to do things in practice versus what we have today. They'd be interested in realism versus communism, realism versus libertarianism, realism versus all kinds of isms that might otherwise be thinkable. Uh, they're interested in teaching useful things in class and marketable skills versus broadening perspectives. However, they were interested in art and tried to think about art in a way that it would allow art and science to coexist in, in the future. Uh, and one of the ways that they did so was to try to make art more democratic compared to what it was at the time, so that art would be something less that only the privileged few could enjoy and uh, understand and participate in. Uh, but again, this was kind of a at the top of their list of, of things to try to work on, art uh, and uh, kind of the view of things uh, for enjoyment uh, was something that was necessary for humanity uh, in their view. Uh, people would do this. Uh, people have done this throughout history, so there's no point in ignoring it. But at the same time, uh, they're certainly kind of biased towards the perspective of actually doing things rather than kind of designing visible uh, representations of those things. 
Uh, so they're interested in, in using technology, and especially using technology in the classroom. Uh, so this would kind of be a hundred years before uh, computers in the classroom became thinkable by people such as Toffler and McLuhan. Uh, this is kind of a group that's trying to change the way that we teach using technology itself. Um, and they're interested in technology versus the quote-unquote natural way of doing things, regardless of how natural it is. They're interested in pluralism and multiculturalism versus the one true way uh, or, or kind of like a boiling pot of only one way of doing things if there's no consensus of what exactly is the best way. Uh, so there may be multiple ways of approaching the same problem, the same issue, the same cultural uh, kind of background or, or practice. So different approaches, going back to the different approaches video, uh, there, there are different approaches for not just solving problems, but understanding problems. And this is a very problem-centric view of the, the world and philosophy in general where you have, you come up with a problem or against a problem, and then you solve it. And the, anything that will help you solve that problem is what they are interested in. They're more interested in the question of does it work versus any emotional comfort you would get from the answer of that question. Uh, they're interested in function rather than form. Future versus past-oriented thinking. Empirical data and evidence versus a priori data or abstraction. Uh, they're interested in viewing man as the measure of all things versus the kind of Copernican view of man as just a part of the broader universe. Uh, they're interested in computer science rather, th rather than the arts, although the original thinkers, as mentioned, didn't have computers because computers weren't invented yet. Uh, this was something that once computers were invented, pragmatists kind of stuck to them, and to this day, people who are pragmatists and who are kind of in the the line of thinkers of uh, pragmatism uh, tend to take computer science. They tend to go into it and at least try to get some understanding of how this part of our uh, so or society and kind of uh, technical infrastructure works uh, so that they can reason about it appropriately. Uh, that they're, uh, they would be probably more interested in, say, something like cash versus Bitcoin. I mean, I'm a pretty big Bitcoin fanatic, but again, you can't make as much of a pragmatic argument against using cash in a lot of situations. Uh, same thing goes for Ripple. Uh, they would probably be more interested in using cash in practice in most of the time than Ripple. Uh, they're interested in kind of a, a Puritan or uh, very minimalist uh, lifestyle rather than a lifestyle of luxury uh, and kind of superfluous spending. Uh, they're interested in a work-life balance versus dedication and signaling games uh, so that you would you wouldn't necessarily dedicate your entire life to one thing because that would be a sign that you're not necessarily solving a problem so much as uh, uh, viewing yourself in relation to that thing. Uh, you, you, they would be more interested in what the customer wants right now versus changing your tool chain to be more, kind of make more sense to you. Uh, they would be more interested in not giving your shit away for free uh, versus actually improving the world by doing so. So obviously, you know, I'm not going to agree with everything that pragmatism is about, but you can kind of see that there's a common thread here going through all of these, in that does it work? Can it be reduced to action? Uh, those are the kinds of things that pragmatists uh, would have been and continue to be interested in doing. They're going to view the, the basic categories, all, and practically all kinds of beliefs, including, you know, the, the categories that distinguish things from each other, uh, even going back to the basic ten that Aristotle described, uh, as just concepts that we happen to use because they're useful in solving problems. Uh, so again, this is very close to and related to Polya and the Polya video in terms of, you know, if, if you can force yourself to see even such basic pro properties of the universe as things that we observe just to solve problems, Maybe you can manipulate that in some way, shape, or form so that you can pro solve problems in a more efficient way. And it all begins with a problem. So you have a problem, any knowledge that you know is in reference to either that problem or some other problem or something that you could use for to solve some problem. If it's not, then it's not really knowledge in the sense that they would understand it. Uh, Bayesian statistics works very much like this, uh, and we discuss it as much in the 10 Ideas 50 Years video series. Uh, can't remember which video though, sorry. Uh, it's, there's a book uh, by John Dewey, one of the kind of foremost pragmatists, called uh, Common Faith, 
which attempts to bridge religious belief and everything valuable in, in that, uh, along with empiricist science. And although he doesn't necessarily succeed in everything that he's doing, he's doing so towards this kind of kind of motivation of, of actually making use of it so that humanity doesn't destroy itself once, of course, they had nuclear weapons. Uh, this is, of course, related to some of the other videos that we've talked about. For example, the Descartes video, uh, in that pragmatism is, tends to be opposed to and is practically a reaction against uh, Descartes. Uh, Descartes' stance was that the first step you doubt everything, and then you see what remains, and then you kind of work towards solving problems. Well, they kind of skip the first two steps in that, uh, and so that they don't necessarily believe that you have to doubt beliefs unless you are given a reason to do so. Uh, and in some cases, you don't even have to justify your beliefs in order to believe them, as long as when you do come across reasons to doubt them, that you kind of have to work a little bit harder than Descartes would have to clear things up with science. They would have treated knowing as something that is uh, active rather than passive, and that thinking is physical activity. Quote, the organism interacts with the world through self-guided activity that coordinates and integrates sensory and motor responses. The implication for the theory of knowledge is clear. The world is not passively received and thereby known. Active manipulation of the environment is involved integrally to the process of learning from the start." Unquote. In other words, the implication to artificial intelligence and epistemology, again goes to that video, uh, is huge. You have this connection between the knower, the thinker, the thing that has knowledge, and the outside universe that's necessary, that you have to be interacting in order to be intelligent, that you have to have this level of interaction in order to learn. Uh, and that, quote, a reader is more like a singer lending their own interpretation to a piece of music than a listener in the audience. It's a collaborative process, unquote. I.e., even in something as simple and as passive as reading, you're still taking part, and so that it's an active process. That's how they're going to view something as simple as reading. Uh, and so they're going to view Issues like Descartes, uh, with his kind of global doubt, uh, as we would kind of view uh, the issue of global warming, and that if you started from the standpoint that you aren't absolutely sur sur sure that uh, the IPCC isn't compromised, or the IPCC is you know, not doing their science right, uh, you may take more time than you actually have to recreate all their results. In Descartes' time, there wasn't so much that humanity has done that a single individual couldn't replicate. Yeah, there were some skilled artists like Leonardo or Michelangelo, but for the most part, uh, I mean, Newton only took about two to five years to completely overturn everything. And so we can't really look down on Descartes for kind of thinking that, but we kind of know a little bit different in that there's a lot of things like the IPCC that would be really difficult to replicate as an individual. And so we have kind of reason to just believe what they think, although to maintain some level of skepticism. But again, the pragmatists would just say, you know, don't worry about it. Just trust the result. Go from there. It's related to the argument from ignorance, because uh, we can believe things that we have no evidence for. So they're going to be guilty of committing this fallacy, but they're not going to care, because they are going to be always skeptical of their own beliefs uh, to the extent that it doesn't affect their actions. Uh, so, for example, I could say, well, does the moon contain helium? I would say yes. Have I ever tested? Have I actually gone to the uh, you know, material science research in the moon? No, of course not. I read about it once. And so that's not really enough to justify a belief. But nevertheless, in practice, I'm a pragmatist in this particular context. I believe it, even if I don't necessarily have reason to. Uh, it's related to the burden of proof uh, video, in, in that uh, beliefs are kind of, ge or people are generally considered innocent until proven guilty. Whereas pragmatists may not always believe that. They may believe that people are guilty until they're proven innocent. Uh, because in practice, that may actually, uh, at least in the short term, look like it's providing more results. As kind of mentioned, it is related to the epistemology in an AI video. Uh, Dewey wrote something called, quote, how we think. So he's already thinking about thinking and thinking about how you could kind of look at thinking in a scientific way. Uh, generally, the, the pragmatist stance towards thinking uh, and thinking activity is going to be pro-democracy, pro-science, uh, try, trying to kind of combine these two things in a way that will generalize, uh, trying to express intelligence 
uh, intelligence as an active process that's kind of described, uh, and trying to keep uh, anything that you know connected with the objects of knowledge, i.e. The, the problems, so that there's a constant chain between the things that you're doing, the manipulation of the environment you're doing, uh, and the problems that you're kind of faced with. And purposeful conduct. That's related to proof by contradiction, uh, in that uh, individual pragmatists can be contradictory. Uh, Dewey, for example, uh, tri when he tried to mix arts and sciences, religion and humanity, science and culture, uh, apparently had a few glaring contradictions, so that to some extent we can understand their failings by uh, looking at the places where their, their uh, beliefs were, were kind of too compressed, too many things were going on at once and some contradictions happened. Uh, so that to the extent that they didn't succeed, uh, this may kind of explain it. Some examples of pragmatism uh, we could kind of point out uh, in modern times is the debate between the different political parties here in Canada on the question of austerity. Uh, so that you can basically force austerity and the kind of lack of spending uh, federal funds uh, for two reasons. For ideological reasons, such as the conservatives uh, kind of are interested in doing, uh, for to basically not spend money to quote unquote starve the beast, or you could do so for pragmatic reasons, like the NDP is kind of interested in doing, right, to put ourselves in a better position for social programming. Uh, it's uh, also uh, kind of worth pointing out that this week I got into an argument with other people on the internet, surprise, surprise, uh, about feeding animals. And uh, although nobody involved uh, kind of admitted to subscribing to pragmatism, uh, a, pragmatism or a pragmatist would not agree with my characterization of the issue, that is, that we should respect living things in and of themselves. Uh, they would have probably said something different. Like, they would have said, uh, you know, you shouldn't just respect another person because they're a living thing. There should be a reason for you to act in a certain way, some problem that you're solving. That would have been their particular stance on that issue. As kind of pointed out, there's a lot of things that, uh, a lot of ways that pragmatists can see the world kind of that seem to be kind of lacking. So, for example, they, they kind of... Uh, uh, ignore the possibility uh, of basically treating uh, short-term gains on some particular problems uh, in it as, as valuable in and of themselves while missing who kind of gets those gains. So they kind of are a little bit blind to privilege and power. Uh, see kind of the Great White Combine video for how those kind of things play out. But in general, uh, they will uh, propose situ solutions to situations without fully considering who's affected and who pays for it, uh, rather than who kind of benefits. Uh, but this is kind of, a t again, a typical American uh, viewpoint on things, so we shouldn't be too, su too surprised that they kind of think of things in that way. And it's worth pointing out that pragmatism is a strange thing to believe. I mean, it's, it's hard to kind of justify in and of it itself, uh, especially since pragmatists tend not to be interested in justifying their beliefs, because it doesn't really help them do anything. Uh, but it may be valuable to think about, and it may be hard uh, to uh, kind of, or it might be hard to justify it, but it, it's worth framing your beliefs, no matter what you believe, in their viewpoint, and by a, pragma a pragmatic viewpoint, because what, once you do so, you'll, you'll find that it is easier to convince other people of your beliefs when you do so. So, for example, the free software arguments tend to be framed in pragmatic or pragmatist uh, terms. And this is not an accident. Again, people will be more willing to accept your ideas and your beliefs if you kind of frame them in these terms than if you do otherwise. So, are there any questions from the audience today? No questions? Okay. Uh, as usual, there should be a, uh, a comment uh, thread available for anyone watching this video to ask questions about pragmatism and uh, belief. Uh, as usual, there should be a Bitcoin donation address Although it would make more sense to use something like Patreon in a, a pragmatic sense, uh, I am not necessarily a pragmatist. Mm. So, uh, enjoy this video, and uh, enjoy the ones to follow it. See you then.